Hey, have you ever let your imaginary friend get a little out of hand? Does your raw power force you into a series of increasingly complex Vogue poses? Well, congratulations! You might be an astral self mock. But what is an astral self mock? Well, start doing sit ups and get used to saying, I wanna punch stuff! I wanna punch stuff! Because we're training to take on everyone. Monks have a unique place in the 5e community, with many people outright hating the class entirely. Hip, hip. Boo! You stink! And those people suck. Yeah, that's right guys, sorry to break it to you, but hatred for monks is overblown and boring. I think the cause of this frustration stems from the fact that many people don't recognize what the monk is meant to do. We'll go over it more later, but for now, check this out. Jojo, pose, 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 Jojo. Now, I understand if you're not an avid anime connoisseur like myself, but for those in the know, Wizards of the Coast ended up binge-watching the first three seasons of a certain beloved Japanese series Gary! and went, uh, yeah, let's just do that. And guess what? Shit worked, man. So, how do we take advantage of this pretty egregious plagiarism? Well, at level 1, you've trained your body in all forms of kicking ass, gaining you martial arts. As such, you can use your dexterity mod instead of strength for attacks and damage, and your punches equal a d4. This increases as you level up, eventually making your fist as strong as Warhammer's, but we'll get there. You also get a follow-up punch as a bonus action as long as you attack on your turn, so when your insane adopted brother murders your dog and kisses your girlfriend, you can punch him in the face. Twice. You also get unarmored defense. Essentially, you've honed your body to the point where damage just bounces off of you. As long as you're only wearing a crop top or a Japanese school uniform, your abs of steel are so strong you can add your dex and wisdom modifiers to your AC. This gives you the freedom to bust out a memeable pose mid-fight, but also become so muscular it makes an entire generation question their sexuality. You can't catch me, gay thoughts! At second level, we gain access to Hamon. But for some reason everybody keeps calling it key. These come in key points equal to your monk level that you can spend to pull off techniques like patient defense, step of the wind, or flurry of blows. Flurry of blows is going to be your bread and butter, allowing you to take an additional attack to your bonus action on arm strike, making sure you <coughs> Did I just have a stroke? Step of the wind is also cool, allowing you to dash or disengage as a bonus action, or use patient defense to dodge as a bonus action. We also get unarmored movement, raising our walking speed by 10 feet, and dedicated weapon, allowing you to use a specific weapon you've concentrated your key on. As as long as you're proficient with it. A sword works great here, but how about focusing your key on a pair of clackers and yeeting them at the half-naked vampire alien? Does that sound bizarre? <laughs> at third level, your power set takes a huge leap in complexity and you hand the reins off to your grandson. What was his name? By spending a key point, you can manifest a pair of astral arms that fight with you. These arms can attack with 5 extra feet of reach, and can use your Wisdom mod for unarmed attacks and damage, as well as strength checks and saves. You're also now able to snatch bullets out of the air with deflect missiles. When hit with a ranged attack, you can now spend your reaction to reduce the damage to 1d10 plus your dex mod plus your monk level. If you reduce the damage to 0, you can yeet that missile back by spending a key point. Send back arrows, crossbow bolts, a dog, the sky's the limit. Fourth level gets a slow fall, allowing us to use our shadow? and we'll workshop it, to basically let us never worry about falling damage, but you also get quick and healing, which is cool and all, but you'll probably forget about. Fifth level adds another <laughs> to your <laughs> Pearl. And you can also punch someone in the spine to interrupt their key for a stunning strike. Spinning a key point forces the bang guy to make a constitution save or be stunned until the end of your next turn. Which is insanely annoying for the DM who likes using creatures without legendary resistances and keeps getting stun locked out of a f***ing fight. You also get Focused Aim to spend key points to increase an attack roll by 2 per point, potentially turning a miss into a hit. And your Monk die increases to a d6, meaning you can punch someone so hard they'll be financially ruined trying to fix their teeth. Finally, 6 level lets us put a face to the... walk? Because it walks behind you? And still not there. Your astral self now comes with a full noggin that appears when you spend two key points. The head can act as a helmet, giving you magical dark vision for 120 feet, advantage on insight and intimidation checks, and you can whisper in people's ears within 60 feet of you or bellow an insane scream, amplifying your voice to anyone within 600 feet. Oh my god! Have you ever been regularly set on fire by a legion of psychos controlled by an undead vampire head sickeningly stitched onto the corpse of your jacked dead granddad? Well, evasion at level 7 lets you not only dodge the damage of an ability that forces a deck saving throw, but also the trauma that last sentence induces. 
EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! So, if you make a deck save, you take no damage, and if you fail, you only take half. Either way, you can avoid fireballs and a trip to the therapist. You also get stillness of mind, so you never have to break your stoic demeanor, allowing you to end the charm of frightening as an action. 9th level lets us run up walls and across water, and 10th level makes our abs so clean they cure poison and disease. Speaking of abs, at 11th level our bubble buddy, no, that sucks, gains its torso with a few added buffs. You can now deflect energy of acid, cold, fire, force, lightning, or thunder damage by spinning your reaction to reduce it by 1d10 plus your wisdom modifier. Your arms also become empowered, allowing you to add an additional martial arts die to one of your unarmed strikes once per turn, which at this level also bumps up to a d8. 13th level gets us Tongue of the Sun and Moon, allowing all creatures that understand a language the ability to understand what you're saying. You've traveled all across the world and languages never seem to be a problem, but that much tongue dexterity also comes with other benefits. <laughs> At 14th level, we get proficiency in all saving throws and can spend a key point for a free reroll if we fail, and at 15th level we get Timeless Body, allowing us to ignore the effects of aging. You may be an old man, but those pegs haven't aged a day. That's it! Your astral self stands behind you! A behind! Wait, no, a stand! At 17th level, your stand takes on its ultimate form with Awakened Astral Self. By spending 5 key points, your Astral Self appears in full, increasing your AC by 2 and allowing you to attack 3 times instead of 2. With your flurry of blows, that brings our... up to... This combo is absolutely nasty! You still gain all your benefits from the arms, visage, and body, and your martial arts die increases once again to a D10. Wait, there's more levels? Well, at 18, we get Empty Body, allowing us to spend 4 key points to become invisible for 1 minute and gain resistance to all damage but force, and spend 8 points to cast Astral Projection on yourself. Level 20 gets us Perfect Self, as though we weren't already perfect, regaining 4 key points if we roll initiative without any. Wait, has this whole thing been a JoJo reference? Yes, 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 yes. So, why do people hate on monks so much? I think too many people try to use monks as frontline fighters and then seem surprised when that doesn't work out. You're never going to be able to tank damage like a fighter or barbarian, but you can spend key strategically to dive in and out of combat, capitalizing on stunning strikes and maneuvering to avoid damage. And this subclass makes that even easier. Your astral arms have 10 feet of reach minimum. Combine this with feats like Sentinel and your monk is virtually untouchable. So we're already super strong, but those last three levels in monk aren't really doing much for you. However, a dip into fighter gets you action surge, making that increase to and you can pick up a subclass like Champion to double your chances of critting. Sorry monk naysayers, you're just wrong. The Astral Self Monk is not only fun and strong, it sticks to a specific idea and plays into it so well. Also for D&D and anime fans, this guy is this guy. So if you like punching stuff but don't like getting your clothes dirty, can deliver an ass kicking that spans generations, and take an adventure with the boys that accidentally saves... Come on, go! Guess what? You might be an astral self monk. Hey everyone, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. And please, don't forget to subscribe down below, it really, really helps me out. Right now the channel is growing okay, but you have no idea how far a like, a comment, or a subscription goes towards pushing us in the algorithm. So that's all for now, I hope you have an excellent day, and see you in the next one.